Hi, I'm Anastasia and welcome back to my channel. Today, I wanna to talk to you about my top five resources for learning Golang, and I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the project ideas I have to really hone your skills. So why do you even wanna learn it? The scientific community has a lot of love for Python, but I've become a big fan of Go. It's described as kind of a mix of Python, Java, and C++. It has a small amount of keywords, which makes it really easy to learn. It has fast compilation, and it handles concurrency really well. The most annoying thing about Go is that the name is completely ungoogleable, even though it was created by Google. So here are my top five resources for learning Golang. I'll put all the resources and links in the description below. Number one, learn Golang at the tour of Go. Where else should you go to learn the programming language besides the official documentation? And how often is that official documentation really fun? The Tour of Go is an interactive tutorial taking you through all the basics of the Go programming language. No downloads required, just try Go right in your browser. They also have this tutorial for many languages and you can download it for offline use. My recommendation here, if you're trying to learn the programming language really fast, kind of like I did, because I had a job that required me to use Golang, so I wanted to get caught up on all the basics very quickly, is to go through and do the main tutorial once. Then go back and do the advanced exercises. These exercises will deeper your understanding of the programming language and show you gaps in your knowledge. It's very different reading about a programming language and doing the tutorials on it and actually problem solving with it. Not only that, but the Go website has amazing documentation and a blog that covers topics from beginner to advanced. Personally, I did a lot of work on CPU and memory performance profiling in my work, and I found a blog post from 2011 that was updated in 2013 that still incredibly worked. Golang intends that code written in Golang 1 specification will continue to work no matter what happens, and they're doing the best effort with that. Kudos to the team for keeping all this up to date and updating the blog with awesome talks from GopherCon and other conferences. It's an awesome community. Number two, the Go programming language book. I got it right here. I started reading this book along with a tour of Go when I was learning the basics. Though I'd coded in Python before and done a lot of web app development in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, a lot of the concepts in the Go programming language were new to me. Things like concurrency and interfaces were new to me, and the tour of Go just didn't go deeply enough for me to really understand how these things worked. Even now, this book sits on my desk, and I reference it a lot in my first year learning how to code in Golang. If you're diving into Go in an existing code base, I don't recommend reading this book cover to cover. First, I really recommend covering some of the introductory chapters and becoming familiar with the Go terminology. I did this by reading the first few chapters on program structure and data types, and then skimming the headers and introductions of the rest of the chapters. When I got stuck on some code and realized, now I have to use channels, I would go back to that chapter because I already knew the terminology and be able to quickly find what I was looking for and what I was trying to do in my code. Learning the terminology up front will help you find the resources to solve your problems. Like, Go has no while loops, or that Go has slices, which are very similar to arrays in other languages, but Go also has arrays. You'll mostly work with slices, so now you know to search for slice instead of array, and you need to be able to differentiate between the two. These sort of terminology issues are good to get your head wrapped around early because you can actually then ask the question that you're meaning to ask. One of the best resources for getting that overview is another official Go document called Effective Go. It's a quick introduction that not only covers the major features of Go, but also covers best practices and style guidelines. Number three, learn how to code, Google's Go programming language. I never finished it, unfortunately, this is a bad habit I have with my Udemy course purchases, but it's as long as a full semester university course. There are 45 hours of lectures and the instructor is very approachable. If you have a better time learning with video lectures, this course is really cheap and starts with the basics. So for example, if you're not familiar with variables, functions, all that, that will cover this in this course. The other resources I've mentioned assume you've had experience with another programming language before, so if you're a true beginner, this is the course to start with. Then you should start supplementing with the tour of Go and then move into the Go programming languages book. Number four, go by example. Often when I was searching how to do something in Go, go by example would come up. It has a lot of code snippets to solidify the concepts that you've learned in these other resources. It's brief, but it's really comprehensive, ranging from the basics like functions and variables all the way to mutex, synchronization, channels, all of that. However, it isn't interactive, so I'd recommend taking these examples and putting them into that tour of Go, Go Playground, and playing around with them. Number five, building web applications with Go. This free ebook teaches you Go as you're working on building a real web application. A lot of these books that I've covered do talk about building simple HTTP servers, but they really don't go into depth about making Go work with databases, web services, deployment, and tying all that in with the front end. 
From here, you can find more resources on specific technologies that you want to use with your Golang web app development. Now, a couple of bonus resources. Now, these won't teach you the programming language, but it'll help you learn it a lot easier. Number one is this blog post on common gotchas in Golang. Those gotchas will get you. Each programming language has its own eccentricities and nuances, and this page has saved me hours of debugging. The first one that bit me was iteration variables and closures in for statements. The iteration variables and for statements are reused every iteration. This means that each function literal created in the for loop will use the same variable. So that means you get the variable value at the time that the Go routine starts running. So what you need to do is create a copy of the variable locally. We have a lot of comments in our code going, Go routine here, so we have to do this x assigns x thing, sorry. Bonus number two resource is a good IDE. A good IDE is invaluable. It yelled at me a lot when I was learning how to code in Go because it helped me figure out what I could and couldn't do with the language. I'm an autodidact, so I prefer to learn by bashing my head against the wall for a couple hours and seeing what sticks. The IDE really helped. I use Goland as my IDE and I'm obsessed with how great it is. Bonus number three, there's a Slack channel for Go developers. The Go for Slack is incredible and has thousands of developers from across the world that are learning how to code in Go. There's channels to get help from people, local channels if you want to meet other developers in your area, and thousands of other channels on all sorts of topics. While there are a ton of resources out there for learning how to code in Go, learning from a book or a tutorial or a video is just the first step to becoming proficient in a programming language. Building a project makes you apply these concepts in a real life setting and forces you to truly understand the caveats and the edge cases. While web development is a fun side project you can do over the weekend, and that's why I included that last resource on building web applications with Go, in that case, I usually spend a lot more time messing with the front end than I do the back end and not solidifying those back end concepts. So here's a list of some other fun side projects you can do in Go to really focus on the back end. First, you can build a game. There's this fun website called Go for Sizes where they have tutorials on all sorts of Go projects. You can take a lot of these project ideas and adapt them on your own. For example, one of them is building a blackjack game. But instead of blackjack, why don't you make another game you like? Another project idea is to build a URL shortener. Bitly costs like $30 a month, so why not build one yourself? Now you've saved money and learned something new. Another project idea is to teach your Google Home something new. I found this amazing blog post by Alex Plateau on building a Google Home action in Go. This example helps you get the air quality index of the city you're in. Maybe instead you want to have your Google Home read you the top three posts from your favorite subreddit in the morning. You can be so creative here and learn so much about different APIs and learn about data extraction. You'll also work with a lot of other cool Google tools like Dialogflow. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and now you might consider learning Golang. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe below if you enjoyed this video because I'm making a lot more content on quantum computing, machine learning, and a bunch of other fun tech stuff. Remember, all the links to the resources that are mentioned are below in the description. And remember to let me know if you built anything cool in Go. I'm really excited to hear from you and maybe see you on the Go for Slack.